Issues. I'm Sal. Nathan. And I'm Ben. Happy New Year! It's the first back issues of the new year yeah. that we're shooting in the new year. <laughs> right. Because there was another <laughs> episode already... that came out in the first of yeah, the year. It already happened. But, but now it's the new year. Officially, yeah. here we are. Booyah. We're going to talk guess, about... I guess it was officially the new year when we released the other one. It was. Yeah, it was. I mean, we, we, we had no control over it whatsoever. It, it came regardless of whether we were prepared for this it. This is the new new year! That's right. <laughs> we're talking about the button from DC Comics. It's a DC Rebirth... I hesitate to use the term event. By the way, I got two copies. Ooh. And they both have lenticular covers. Whoa. I thought it was going to be like volume one, volume two, but it's just two copies. It's just two copies. Okay. It's just, it's it's just, just two, two copies. copies. <laughs> it's called The Button, but it really is should be called Batman The Flash The Button. And I've seen mm. it billed as such. But it's a Batman Flash event, and I really hesitate to use that term. And the reason I hesitate to use that term, now I have no book, <laughs> is because here's the thing. Uh, they did a really good job on these covers. Yes. Usually, like, when it's the, the, the holographic, holographic kind of thing, yeah. like, there's that ridging. Oh, I know. Oh, no, trust me. There's man. a little bit of, uh, of texture to this, but mm-hmm. it is, it's really smooth. Marvel Legacy put out a holographic cover for every book that they made not a few months ago, and they were so incomprehensible. Like, you, it's a full image shift. It's a different full image, and it just... It was incomprehensibly bad. And it was just like, I'm like, you did this when it was a gimmick 25 years ago. Like, how, how do you not remember how to make this shitty gimmick? Then DC makes these really pretty lenticular covers. Now, the point of the, the cover is actually to do something, too. They're like, it's it's Batman, it's The Flash. This is cover art by uh, Jason Fabic, who's, I mean, obviously, he had to draw Flash to look a little bit like Batman. Yeah. What what is this? Is this evil Batman on the back here? No, that's Flashpoint Batman. That's Thomas Wayne Batman. Oh, okay. and uh, and Reverse Flash, okay. aka Aobard Thawne. Yes. Okay. So I know it, it, they're, it's addictive when you when you have these. Um, so DC Rebirth had this interesting concept. Do you remember 2016? DC Rebirth number one comes out. You're yeah. like, whoa. Dr. Ooh. Manhattan and stuff. We did but a whole back issues on it. Yeah, we just ended that. Now we're doing this. It's awesome and great. And what's amazing is it did a lot of like setting up. And so at the end of DC Rebirth number one, there's this moment where uh, Batman reaches into the wall of the Batcave and recovers the bloody comedian button from yeah, Watchmen. It's, it's like a lightning bolt. He yeah, when Wally shows up in the Batcave, he creates a lightning bolt which embeds it in the wall. I'm not going to look reason. through that because I will. Enough. I will just zone out. <laughs> I, this I've has learned happened. enough. That's fair. So, uh, Batman recovers this button in 2016, and we're like, "What?" And we were all expecting there to be like a to be continued in the Justice League versus the Watchmen, mm-hmm. which sounds like a really creatively bankrupt concept, but. <laughs> At this yeah. point in this world that we live in... It would make bank. Well, not only would it make bank, but it's like, what isn't a creatively bankrupt concept? Like, in a world where DC did an entire line of Watchmen books called Before Watchmen, where they put, like, all their top creators or any creators that said yes on each Watchmen book mm-hmm. and just tried desperately to mine as much as they could and the whole collective comic book community all stood up and said no, like, this is not good enough. Yeah, like, just you might as well just have Batman punch Rorschach in the face. I mean, like, why not? Because at that point, who cares? All bets are off. It's all horseshit, as our good friend Alan Moore would say. And I think one of two things happened. One, they were definitely going to do a Justice League versus Watchmen book. And then they went like, wait a minute. People are so excited about all the breadcrumbs we put into this one book. We could turn whole loaves of bread out of those crumbs for the next couple of years, that by the time we even get to Justice League vs. Watchmen, everyone will be on board. Mm-hmm. Instead of being like, whoever hears about it happening right now, and then, you know, trying to build from, from, from ground zero. Right. So, hmm. so they did nothing with the button. That bingo. Found. It just, it, like it just, he just sat on it. Right! <laughs> or, or he was doing something in between the pages of all the Batman books coming out. Uh-huh. So then, finally, in like April and May of 2017, they're like, Maybe we should answer the question of the button. Mm-hmm. They don't, but it's a fun story that we're about Aww. to talk about. So, there's the button at least in it. 
Yes. Okay. okay. It is, it is right. non-stop okay. in it. It has some great moments. Does, does, he, he, does he, like, analyze it with stuff? He, he had already done that. Uh, okay. So in this story, which is written co-written by Tom King and Joshua Williamson, Tom King had been writing Batman for DC Rebirth, Joshua Williamson was writing Flash for Rebirth. Okay. And so since Barry Allen is like a forensic specialist, uh, and Batman wants to be one, the two of them work together on the mystery of the button. Batman finds his button, it's got blood on it, obviously Batman's gonna put it through the spectral analyzer and all that right. shit. And because he has a co-worker on the Justice League who does that shit, and probably has better equipment than Batman on that topic, the two of them worked together to, to look it up. And try okay. to figure it out. They found nothing. What do they each like? Nothing. Take one side of the keyboard. So right. Type this side, so I mean, I would just have Flash do it since he's so much faster. But Batman so thinks just... he's hitting it. Flash is hitting all the yeah. time before he does. <laughs> exactly. But unfortunately, we never get to see like them working together on finding Zilch on the button. We don't get a montage of them like pouring chemicals into no, and, which would like... be kind of fun to see. <laughs> Wearing safety goggles. Yeah, yeah. Wear, both of them with lab coats on. Yeah. No, none of that. Batman would not wear a lab coat. This is would, but it would be black. Yeah. There's a moment where Alfred's like bringing them sandwiches. Mm. Batman being like, there's no time for sandwiches. And Flash's like, there's always time for sandwiches. Huh, I already yeah. ate mine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Cute moments like that, totally gone. Now what's interesting about this is, this, uh, I hate Tom King on Batman. Yeah. But Tom King is, is charged with writing the Batman part of these stories. And rumor has it that Tom King's chapter in The Button, the Batman stuff, mm -hmm. was so not in line with what they were hoping to do in this book that Jeff Johns just re-fucking wrote it. Really? Yeah. But it still has Tom King's mm -hmm. name on it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Which has shades of one more day, I think. But mm -hmm. uh, what's funny is I was actually, I didn't know that, I didn't, I didn't hear that rumor when I first read The Button. And so I was like, holy shit, there's hope. For Tom King and Batman, because I really liked this story. Okay. And then it... Oh! Uh, <laughs> maybe it's Jeff Johnson's There you go. Hands oh. pulling the strings. Well, that makes more sense. Exactly. <laughs> Rather yeah, than, than like, Tom King learning to be better at it. his like, style changed mm -hmm. into something that you liked overnight was, yeah. for no reason. It's more like editorial went in and just, it just it changed just, the notes. Yeah. But Josh Williamson writes the Flash stuff. It takes place across both Batman and the Flash titles. Okay. See, now if Marvel had this idea... For the last 15 years or so, Marvel would have been like, okay, you have a little bit of an idea? Well, we're going to take that idea. First of all, when is it? where is it germinating from? A book like Captain America? Okay. Well, first of all, the main story can't take place in the Captain America book. Because that now is tie-in territory. All the supplemental ancillary stuff, that'll take place in Captain America. Your idea? Now it's your idea, the book. That's the main series where your idea is executed. That's going to be 12 issues. But your Captain America book, that will continue as well. But every other book that we're also publishing, and how many books we're publishing every year? Uh, 82? Cool. There are going to be 76 tie-ins. Now, since they're all coming out concurrently, none of them can influence or change or contradict or have any influence over the main title. So, all the books will be totally and arbitrary and have no bearing on the main book. But they will have the logo from the main book. Mm -hmm. And so that will increase sales, we think, for one issue, for that book. <laughs> so, instead of that, DC's like, why don't it, why doesn't it just happen in Batman? Like, the, the next issue of Batman will be the button part one. The next issue of The Flash will be the button part two. And then the next issue of Batman will be the button part three at the end. Wait, we have to have more than three, don't no, we? No, that's it. Well, because as it turns out, you can make soft covers, hard covers, multiple covered hard yeah, covers of just, three, of just books. three books, and people will enjoy it. And you know what? They did, <laughs> despite the fact that you don't find out the mystery of the fucking button. We're just like, what the hell? The whole goddamn thing is about the fucking button. Well, does that mean they're going to have like a button four and a button five no. and button six like later? No, no, no. Like it's, actually, from now. it's actually kind of ingenious how they do this whole thing. The, 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 the fallout of the button could have been summed up at the beginning of Doomsday Clock or at the end of any Justice League book. Mm -hmm. Literally, it's just, it's just here's a fun story. Right, which could have happened at any time. Yes. For any, okay. hmm. So the story opens uh, with a hockey game where uh, there's these two teams and they hate each other and Batman's watching the hockey game for some reason. Mm -hmm. and, and Criminals uh, and Arkham are watching it too. Yeah, it's a very popular game. Yeah. Because in this Crack Mirror version of reality, hockey's really popular. <laughs> well, I'm sure Mr. Freeze loves it. Are Damn. you making a Batman and Robin reference? <laughs> because if you are... 
kudos. So we also make references to some some breadcrumbs we dropped in DC Rebirth number one, like Saturn Girl, the uh, member of the Legion of Superheroes from the future who is now locked up in Arkham because yeah. she thinks she's a girl from the future. Uh, she's here, and she knows that one member of the hockey team is going to die on the ice in this game they're watching. And no one listens to her. Exit Saturn Girl for the rest of the book. I'm sorry, now, she knows that because she's from the future. Because she's from the future. Because she was a big fan of right. hockey. She's like, from the 20th century. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 21st century. Right? Hockey, I mean, sorry. like, now maybe she could just look at... Uh, I don't know. I had all of them on Holodex. Yeah. Does she have an ability where she, like, Can memorizes reach... everything? No, it's not like she has a photographic memory or some yeah. kind of, like, or a holographic memory or whatever. <laughs> she, uh, no, she's just, she's from the future. Okay. So we're just making a reference to it. All right. Uh, so... Then we have this really rad image depicted by Jason Fabic, who of Batman in front of all of his monitors and all of them looking at the button. That's a little bit crazy. It is a little bit crazy, but it's also very <laughs> Batman. Yeah. I, I, I like that he's surrounded by the button, but directly in front of him he's are watching different the game. news feeds. Yeah, yeah, yeah including the hockey, the hockey game. game. Yeah. Yes, and so he's watching the hockey game and he just starts like fiddling with the button. Okay. And uh, so a, a, one of the dudes gets beaten to death on the ice. And this story takes place immediately following Tom King's Batman event called uh, I Am Suicide, in which Batman needs to recover the psycho pirate whose mask can alter people's emotions. Mm -hmm. And if you recall in the episode I Am Gotham, uh, Hugo Strange and various other characters uh, use psycho pirate to manipulate Gotham Girl yep. into being... Uh, afraid and it makes uh, I think it makes Gotham also afraid anyway it results in the end of the book but Gotham Girl is left kind of like emotionally scarred and perpetually in in fear and Batman knows that the only thing that will cure her is using the Psycho Pirate's mask mm -hmm. so there's this really cool story kind of where Batman has to go and fight Bane and retrieve the Psycho Pirate and his mask okay that's another story for another time but the spoilers is he gets it Okay. And so, at the at the beginning of the story, he has Psycho Pirate's mask adjacent to his monitors, and he's fiddling with the button, and then he just kind of tosses the button, and it lands next to the Psycho Pirate's mask when a, like, small little charge zaps the button and then blasts a lightning bolt at Batman, a similar lightning bolt to the kind that put the button here in the first place mm -hmm. and right. returned Wally West to continuity. And this has some connection to Psycho Pirate? Now, that's the thing, is that... What is the connection between the button and Psycho Pirate's mask? Probably nothing, except for the fact that Psycho Pirate was the only one who remembered the original Christ Son of the Earths, mm -hmm. and Psycho Pirate is kind of like connected to universally changing moments in DC's history right. since he, Christ. He, Son he of the has Earth. some sort of ability involving the universe multi-universe uh, well, and continuity it's not really an George ability or... as much as he just remembers it well and then he and then in, well it, now though now it causes stuff to happen so. yeah well it's more like more if you put two interdimensionally like transcendent totems together they'll produce something okay I mean Maybe. that's yeah. that's that's the best working theory I've got I guess that's yeah but okay. it zaps Batman and then he is visited by an image of Flashpoint Batman aka Thomas Wayne his father Would, wouldn't any uh, like alternate reality object then interact with anything in our reality because they're two different dimensions I mean that'd be cool listen now the door's open we can see that let's hope that they use that plot point later they don't I find that uh, to make no sense whatsoever an object from another reality in your reality it's just it's, it's just, just two different object. objects well yes it's, that's it's because the thing that brought it into this reality that's like the well. the 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 catalyst. Yes. Yes. The, the object itself is just a thing. It's just a thing. Yeah. It's a byproduct. Another. But uh, yeah. we, we've already established in comics at the very least that items that are either important or from another reality have some kind of unique aura or charge. Or charge. Okay. Like the, the act of coming from one dimension to another. Leaves like, it like kind of like almost inter-universally radioactive. Okay. All right. Fair enough. So he sees his dad from Flashpoint. He's like, Bruce... And he's like, holy shit. And it's not like one of those weird things where he's like, I think I saw my father. He's like, nope, that was my dad from Flashpoint. Which he remembers? No. <laughs> okay. That's the thing. Is what? that Okay, Flashpoint. We did Flashpoint a while back. Yeah. And in Fla and Flashpoint's the thing that caused the New 52. New 52, yeah. yeah. And we've done a number of stories. And in fact, in DC Continuity, the New 52 
was a separate universe. Yeah. Convergence says that. Yeah. And uh, Super Lois and Clark Superman says that when Superman from pre uh, from pre Flashpoint comes to the New Fifty Two universe. Mm-hmm. But then, in the Superman books, they establish that there's actually like that it isn't that there's two Superman. It's right. that it was always the same Superman, and something happened which split him and also kind of fucked up the DC universe. They split so, him in twice. <laughs> You didn't spit everywhere. <laughs> You're so, welcome. <laughs> thank you. So what's interesting about the fact that Flashpoint Batman is here and the fact that Bruce still has the letter from Barry at the end of Flashpoint mm. and the fact that Barry still remembers everything that happened in Flashpoint. But Bruce doesn't. But Bruce doesn't. Well, that's consistent. But the fact that Bruce, that Barry remembers like the DC Universe before Flashpoint, even though he was like rebooted along with everybody else in the New 52 suggests, and I've heard this theory a number of times, and I believe it's more than theory at this point, but I'm going to go on a limb and say that after Superman gets merged with his New 52 Superman counterpart and it remakes reality, Mm -hmm. it basically draws back the curtain and reveals that the New 52 never was a separate universe. And that, like, it wasn't so much that the New 52 changed everything and everybody got young and hip and stuff. Right. As much as... The New 52 is the result of some external force, which I guess you could read as editorial, <laughs> fucking with the DC universe. And there's going to be more theories to that in, in this book. Mm-hmm. The idea that, like, we're still in DC that you remember and enjoy from before Flashpoint. Right. This is just like, we call it the New 52. So, well, we called it the New 52, but now that's over. Right. Now we're in Rebirth. And Rebirth is all about... And Rebirth wasn't so much as a, a formal event, nor was it like a, a catalyst or a moment or a, a thing that actually occurs. Mm-hmm. It's not like, remember the Rebirth event? They, they can't talk about it. Right. It's more like it's it's what they brand the period in publishing yeah. when they just stopped trying to do whatever they were trying to do <laughs> during DC New 52 and DCU and yeah. a lot of the crap. Yeah, so Rebirth is not a universe. It's just no. a signal to you that they're they're trying to stop Give you back doing what you the want. thing that they were doing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, even though the individual writers are, can still do whatever well, they want. Yeah, and now actually they can do even more than what they want because we're not building the DC universe anymore because we're just referring to stuff people like. Right. Like... It was always really confounding in the Batman New 52 where it's like they would refer to stuff that happened even though Batman's only been in operation for five years and he's had six Robins and yeah. like he's had like all these adventures and he did have his back broken by Bane and it's like and Superman technically died and it's like oh yeah did Superman die? And then he had four other Supermen? <laughs> where's the clone Superman then? Like where's uh you know yeah, Where'd they go? Where'd they go? Where, where's Steel? How, what's his whole thing? Was everything that happened in 52 for Steel? Did that all happen? Hey. Did Lex Luthor give people powers? Hey! Like, th- hey! Hey! Shut up! <laughs> exactly. We're new fifty two wing, and then it's like, oh, you all liked that. Well, we're re- rebirth. So, where where so, it still happened, but we're not showing it. If yeah. that's the case, though, then what the heck was Flashpoint? It was just a thing that happened. Now, it's Flashpoint technically did happen. Oh, what's Flashpoint? Barry went back in time trying to save his mom. He fucks up, creates an alternate reality that looks rad and cool. They go into an adventure. When he comes back, he fixes everything. Flashpoint is more or less what. It was supposed to be at its, at, its, at its inception. Originally, Flashpoint was just like, wouldn't it be cool if we did this story about Flash going back, like going back in time, fucking things up, and then creating an alternate dark future? But then, like, yeah, but they don't it, actually live in that dark future, like, right? Well, but exist. but then, like, the idea I think originally was that when when Flash fixes everything, it just goes back to normal. Yeah, yeah. But, but then they went, oh, wait, 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 no, we can reboot everything, and so they did. Yeah. But now but, they're saying that, like, but they wrote it, and yeah. I saw it. Yeah. I watched it happen and I saw it happen. Don't tell me it didn't happen. Uh, they showed all the different realities. Oh, yeah, and, uh, yeah, they did say, yeah, they didn't do that. No, that was all smoke and mirrors by someone else oh. who was trying to trick you and dazzle your oh. eyes into thinking that the universe was changing. I see. It was a deliberate misdirection by a consciousness. Yes, it was not a editorial mistake. <laughs> So Do we blame wasn't. Mysterio? That's another universe. <laughs> That's another universe. So no, they're blaming Doctor Manhattan. Yeah, they're that like, you sense, can't get mad at Doctor Manhattan. Alan Moore created him. He's cool. Yeah, see? So Batman sees his future, his his alternate reality dad, and he immediately calls Flash, and he's like, Flash, I saw that Flashpoint Batman. You got to get down here. 
Like, he doesn't play that bullshit where he's like, Flash, you gotta get down here. There's something very important I have to explain to you, like, later when you get here. Mm -hmm. He's like, the button touched Psycho Pirate's mask, and it made my dad show up, and then he disappeared. It's really weird. You gotta get down here so we can work it out. Right. And Flash's like, I'm fighting ninjas right now. Can you, be, can, can you give me one minute? And he's like, yeah. And then Lightning appears behind Batman. He's like, that was fast. And then Reverse Flash shows up and punches Batman in the face. Whoa! Reverse Flash died at the end of Flashpoint. He mm. was stabbed through the chest by Batman, sure. Thomas Wayne. Uh. Eobard Thawne kind of being pulled out through time allows him to travel through time at whim without using the cosmic treadmill. Mm -hmm. And they're basically like, sure, I died then, but I like didn't because I went back in time and stopped myself from dying or whatever. He doesn't well, explain it. I've got all this in the world. Like, I am a time machine. Exactly. <laughs> or like... I'm a version of myself even, who hasn't died yet. No, he remembers all that shit. Oh, he does? Yeah. Well, that's, I'm every version that, of That's myself. what they should have done. It's just yeah, like, but no. That hasn't happened yet for me. Right. I'm from, like, yeah, I'm from the <laughs> I'm from the reverse Flash that didn't even participate in Flashpoint yet. Yeah. But I but I, my, I ran into my old self and he told me what happened. Yeah, this. so I know. At least that would be interesting. <laughs> like, uh, that would at least be an attempt to make sense of it. They don't. Okay. So reverse Flash and Batman have a really rad looking fight. And Batman's like, okay, I'm fighting a speedster who I don't know and do not interact with, but I know him because Flash has told me about him. Right. And I know he's sadistic and a monster, so, like, I will lose. But all I have to do is stall I have to do stay alive for right. one minute, for one and then minute. Flash will show up and save my ass. Uh -huh. You know how long it is? A minute yeah, and in they, Flash time? And they, they, they calculate it by showing you, like, each second ticking away. As he's also like punching Batman's death. Coolly depicting the nine panel grid layout a la Watchmen. Yes. Yeah. But showing you each moment, each second from this minute. And they do the thing with the color where they alternate mm -hmm. backgrounds. Yeah. So, yeah. No, they're cool. actually doing something really cool. And Fabric is one of the top three best DC artists working today. Mm. So you like seeing Batman getting the shit kicked out of it. It just it's never looked cooler. Yeah. Does he explain why he's beating up Batman? Not really. I mean, like, he makes references that the audience will understand. Okay. You know, but he beats the crap out of Batman, um, and then he finds the letter that Thomas Wayne wrote to, to Bruce, and he's like, and he reads it, and he makes a couple of comments about it. He's like, so you stab me through the chest, you write your dead son a letter, and send it through time, and try and... Blah, blah, blah. That's, that's lame. And then he rips it up in front of Batman, and Batman's like... No! Wow. Wait! I have tape! Yeah, he's like, y y when I'm when I'm moving, no one can touch me. And Batman's like, yeah, that's right. Barry explained to me all that and how it works. When you're blurring, you're not steady unless you're firmly on the ground. You know, like right now. And he grabs a battering and jabs it into his foot, which oh. implants him onto the ground. Okay. So now he's stuck there for a second. And of course, he has a battering embedded in his foot. So Batman gets a few awesome licks in. And then Reverse Flash just, like, pulls his foot through, and it's it's gross. That is gross. So then Reverse Flash just cold cocks Batman. He grabs the button, and he says, What's the mystery of you? As if to say, like, what everyone else is thinking. Right. Then he immediately disappears in a flash of blue electricity. And then a few seconds later reappears. Half his body has been burned off of his skeleton. And he says, I saw God. And then dies. So That's kind of badass. We bring him back to life. Just to kill just him. Just to kill him. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So then Flash shows up and he's like, Hey, sorry I'm late, Bruce. Uh, I swung by the ice skating rink to see if I could save the dude in the game, but no. And then he's like, oh. I have a question, though. <laughs> what the hell is that? <laughs> so. You that, killed my nemesis? Yeah. <laughs> what the hell, Batman? You burned him alive? Um, but obviously, we're supposed to get the impression that Doctor Manhattan, Manhattan did. Yeah, right. The Manhattan's like, oh yeah, hey, where'd that button come from? Like, boo, you That's, can't have that. It's that. Also, like, I see all of time. Right. Exactly. So, so the button's gone. The button's gone now. All right. So, what's the mystery? Well, so button's gone. Is it still button being called the button, or was that the end of the button? Like, so why are these other issues even called the button if it's fucking gone? Well, because it's part of the story. The mystery of the button is what causes the story to begin. Uh, okay. Do we see the button again at any point? Yes, we do. Okay. Yes. Good. Yeah. Hold on. So <laughs> we got a couple more references to things that we said we were going to do something with. 
in DC Rebirth that we still haven't done anything with. Okay. You know, like Johnny Thunder, who was a member of the Justice Society of America, who was old, is now in like a like an old age home, and he's like, "Come on, where's my genie? <laughs> like I'm supposed to be a superhero." When was was anyone gonna do anything with Justice Society, or were you just we're just teasing us for a couple of years? And Jeff Johns is like, "Fuck you!" And then he has to go away. So then we go back to the cave. Barry has like set up a perimeter and like created basically a crime scene, right? To analyze like what happened. Um, and it's interesting because like for Barry, it's like this is the man who murders his mom and also like fucks up everything mm -hmm. for him. So he's just like, "There he is. There's my nemesis." And he's dead. And, like, you can't come back from that. Half your body's a skeleton. <laughs> well, he was also stabbed through the chest before. And yes, it's that. true. And, in fact, he does come back. But, like, <sighs> but he, God damn but it. he, he kind of feels like he has closure and it's awesome. And That's weird. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know. So then uh, we're basically a couple hours later. Bruce he gets closure, is his... but he didn't do it. No. And that's the thing is that he's, like, at one point, Bruce, when he's, like, being holed up in his bedroom, like, covered in bandages and on like well, every kind of painkiller is like looking like Marv yeah it's like Barry like the guy who murdered your mother is dead like do you feel any better and he's like yeah like <laughs> I don't want to talk about it all I imagine was Barry the guy who murdered your mother is dead high five <laughs> exactly <laughs> yes <laughs> but uh, he put uh, he put like crime scene tape around everything yeah like why who's gonna Disturb the crime scene. <laughs> well, I think it's for him. Like, Alfred, you gotta stay out of here. Yeah, I, I think I put the tape around. Well, it's because Alfred is, like, OCD, and he would uh, just immediately try to clean everything up. Right, right. but he sees the tape, and he's like, oh, 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 I, oh, I didn't realize what official crime scene. Yeah, I, well, I can't go Alfred, oh, who in the back cave, it's gonna throw your OCD in. Way <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> There's glass <gasps> everywhere. <gasps> no! I guess, actually... Oh, I'm gonna make some tea! Yeah, make some tea. Make me a few sandwiches. I guess there's so many Bat family members that, like, anybody... Can Anyone could wander in. Up, so there's, like, 16 sense. members of the fucking Bat family yeah. at this point. For the loner Batman. <laughs> so... What if my dad shows up again? Yeah, exactly. I don't want him to look at my cave and assume that I'm just a big slob. Well, not only that, but, like, I want him to see I'm working on stuff. <laughs> dad, look! You're not looking! Look at me <laughs> analyzing things with science! Anyway, so they're talking about how uh, they, they cover ground by explaining... That uh, the button was analyzed, they didn't find anything, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, Barry goes to the watchtower, because he's like, eh, like, I, the question is, where did Thawne go when he disappeared? Because mm -hmm. what happens is, you know, he takes the button, he disappears, some indeterminate time later he comes back, and he's, like, burned up. They're basically both under the assumption that he went back in time, or forward in time, or sure. somewhere in time. Has Wally touched the button at all? We I'm sorry, Barry? Barry, no. Okay. I mean, like, when he analyzed it with Batman, I assume he must have touched it. It's not like Barry fucks it up or anything. I just so. wanted to make sure it wasn't, like, the speed force that was, like, right? it, interacting with shit. Granted, that's not psychopath Well, mask. the speed force is important and comes into play, but it has nothing to do with the button. Yeah, Barry mentions here that he's examining his body and he's like, he's got Speed Force signature on him. Yes, which means he went into through time. You're right. But it's also like, it's my Speed Force, not right. his. Well, because... Like, it's distinctly my, Like, he mentions that that's weird. Yes. It makes him think, like, maybe I killed him. Well, yeah, like, that, that's was, his concern. It's like I was there, or it looks as if I was there based yeah. on his, like, readings or whatever. That's right. And I hope it was. It's yeah, just... that'd be great. But he doesn't tell Batman that. Right, okay. So... Uh, he goes to the watchtower to like check out some more stuff and what's interesting is when we go to the watchtower it's th there's this he goes to this one spot which they call the hall of the lost and found which is basically just like an easter egg patch uh. of references and stuff for things that and for me like okay so my get like it's it's kind of like a reference to <laughs> it was the couch <laughs> <laughs> It's kind of a reference to, like, the Hall of Weapons that the Fortress of Solitude has, but mm. also the idea that, like, Batman makes sure that there's, like, doomsday devices and stuff, like, kept on the Watchtower and not on Earth. Like, so that the... It's just... It's just trophies and crap. It's basically yeah. a way for the Justice League to have their own cool Batcave. Yeah. They oh, got I thought it was a Blue Beetles thing here. Yeah, that's cool. and that's interesting because in the New 52, Ted Kord never became the Blue Beetles, so it's like, what? But then in the New Re Rebirth, like, yeah, he right, did, yeah, he so did. it's like, so what? It's back. I like to think that this is basically just a collection of continuity junk that, mm -hmm. like, started appearing or piling up after they decided they're not doing the New 52 anymore. Okay. <laughs> Where they're like, 
like Martian Manor's costumes here. But it's it's not meant for you to go like what? What does it mean? mean? No, it's more like to show it's it. more like hey nerds, uh, create a Dicks. inverted color grid and show us point by point each item in the cave. <laughs> and in fact, they do. Barry talks about how when he first like rescues Wally, Wally references that like time was stolen from them and that something was out right. there and that so Flash is putting two and two together and he's like whatever took Wally probably also took Thawne. And he's like, the only way to look for it is to use the cosmic treadmill, which I swore I'd never use again after Flashpoint. Ah. And then Batman shows up, and he's like, hey, I'm coming too. And Flash is like, you're practically bedridden. Like, the fact <laughs> that you're wearing a Batman costume is ridiculous. Yeah, it's just covering your bandages. I know that you're well, super and, like, wounded under You're just basically there. carrying 60 extra pounds of stuff for no reason. <laughs> Uh, it helps me heal. So then he's like, okay, we're, Batman's like, no, 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 we gotta go, because I saw my dad from the Flashpoint, and I know he's connected in this someplace. I gotta get another good letter. Yeah, and there's no, and I lost my letter, so there's <laughs> nothing else I can do here. So, Barry jumps on the treadmill, and Batman's like, let's do this. So then Batman, like, ties a Batarang rope to the treadmill, so he gets to, like, ride the treadmill while Barry activates it. Okay. And so, they're they're running through hyper time. Which, like, god damn it. Because after Crisis on Infinite they're, they're Earth... They're not running through quantum time? No, hyper time is established. Mega time? No, we, went, <laughs> so we talked about hyper time and zero hour. I don't fucking remember. Well, nonsense I'll, words. Well, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Now, hyper time <laughs> is important because after Crisis, they got rid of the multiverse. But they were like, how are we going to explain the sliding time scale? Because we need to explain it. Mm-hmm. Which is hilarious, by the way, because, like, now they don't give a shit. <laughs> Like, they don't bother they at all. Yeah. They just, literally in the New 52, they were like, eh, it all happened or nothing happened. And everyone's like, I don't like that at all. And they're like, eh. We're, <laughs> have you, you seen do... the sales? <laughs> Apparently you do like it. Yeah. yeah. You motherfuckers. So they did Zero Hour and they invented this concept of hyper time. Which is basically like, how is it that we can have futures in our comics mm. when it's all one timeline? Mm-hmm. And it's because hypertime exists, and it's where all these timelines can concurrently run and exist at the same time. Sure. But uh, so they're running through the treadmill, and Batman is seeing all of these formations of the Justice League and all these key moments from pre crisis and post crisis and pre New 52. Mm-hmm. Like, he is seeing himself in costumes that technically, according to the New 52 reality, he's never worn before. Okay. And. He's asking Barry to explain it because he doesn't remember any of this crap. Right. Yeah. And Barry's like, he's asking him if these are alternate realities. Sure. Which is a convenient excuse for the editor to say, like, yeah, Rebirth, New 52, it's all separate. Like, all this stuff is in different realities. So we can do different reality stories later. Barry says, no. This all happened in our reality. Because our reality is the reality. Yes. So, like, the formation of the Justice League in the pre flash, in the pre crisis universe. Um, the impetus behind Identity Crisis, which is post-Crisis but pre-Flashpoint, like, that happened too. Crisis on Infinite Earths, which is referenced right here, also happened in our reality. Okay. It's their way of being like, no, it's all part of the same thing. The stuff you all like, it's still here. The Batman you're reading about, it's out. It's your Batman. The uh-huh. Superman you're reading, it's your Superman. Right. This is the real Barry He doesn't Allen. remember it, so it doesn't matter. But it did happen. But it did happen, so all your books are still... You don't have to throw them in the garbage. <laughs> right. Which I think is kind of great, because yeah, I appreciate cool. that, as opposed to being like, all the stuff you liked? Yeah, no. Right. It's Doesn't... inclusive, but at the same time, it's hand-wavy inclusive. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, it also is is leading it, leaving it to somebody else to explain it better. So, does that mean that, like, those different realities they're not no, no, different no. realities they don't exist in the multiverse they don't have their own places in the multiverse you can't go there. well what's interesting is they it's just different times they do in hyper time you go through hyper time you can go to those different places. right right but on the map of the multiverse no there's not there's no universe where it's like post-crisis pre-crisis no no that's all just earth yes okay that'll happen here right all right which I really consistent with that. I'll yeah, that's the that. thing. Yeah. That's why I like that. Yeah. Then uh, now the... in friggin' convergence though, oh. they did take people from, but I guess they were taking them out of hyper time. Yeah, but they didn't not know. From the multiverse. Yeah, but they didn't do that. And then they said that convergence didn't even fucking happen. 
Oh. So. Well, what, what was it then? I mean, no one's bothered to explain that. They're just... They've contradicted convergence to the point where it's like, okay. oh, don't even fucking ask. So oh, everything, we just under the rug. So everything you remember happened... Except convergence. Except that convergence. Did no one... Happen. Because nobody liked that. <laughs> but maybe 20 years when everyone's like, hey, I'm all nostalgic for convergence. Where's yeah. Telos? They'll, uh, they'll do what something. What's the difference did anything with Telos? <laughs> so this big lightning bolt hits the treadmill and knocks Batman and Flash through the whatever speed force i guess okay and they wind Has that up ever happened before no really? so they land in this cave and the cosmic treadmill is destroyed and it's obviously batman's cave from flashpoint they are now in ah. the flashpoint present but after flashpoint happened like it's it's almost like flashpoint never ended okay and Thank you, Barry. So they're this looking is exactly ar- what I wanted. Exactly. <laughs> so they they're looking around. Batman is like, "Oh shit!" Like Barry immediately recognizes it because he's been here before. Uh-huh. And Batman's like, "A cave? This is weird." Oh, that's a picture of my family. And there's the gun that killed my parents. Because ah! <laughs> he's like, "I never recovered the gun. Oh. Like I never found that." But. Oh my god, the killer's in the cave! Which wouldn't be amazing, actually, if he was like, I gotta fucking take this gun with me so that I can solve the murder of my parents. Because I don't even know if they've established it anymore. Sometimes he knows it's Joe Chill, sometimes he doesn't. eh. Anyway, then then Thomas Wayne shows up. Well, what do you want? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. I don't want him to know. It's it's, uh, It's Rebirth. Rebirth. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So then Thomas Wayne Batman shows up and he's like, what up? (laughs) All right. And he basically explains... That Thomas Wayne remembers how it worked out. That like evil one, that Flashpoint Wonder Woman and Flashpoint Aquaman were fighting, and the, the end of Flashpoint happened, and and uh, uh, Aobard kills Thomas Wayne or or mortally wounds him, and then mm-hmm. like the and, and then Barry goes through time, and and then technically the universe is supposed to end, and then it didn't. So he goes back home, and then. Aquaman and Wonder Woman like team up to they basically go okay everything that the reason we went to war dumb you know what we should totally do kill Batman so then the legions of Atlantis and Amazonia or Themyscira join forces and converge on Wayne Manor to kill but why to kill Batman fucking because it would it would end the story in an exciting conclusion it's a cool <laughs> battle okay and Batman between, between his friends well, no, because like in Flashpoint, it's Flashpoint, Aquaman, and Flashpoint, Wonder Woman. They were their weird like tryst slash murder of Aquaman's wife or whatever like caused a big war which tore the world in half. So they're assholes anyway. Yeah. Okay. So Wayne uh, Thomas is like, it's cool though because I've wired the entire place with explosives and I'm gonna blow them and myself to to, to Kingdom Come. But now you're here. But now you're here, so we can oh, catch so this up. this is happening right now. Oh, yeah. He's in the middle of He's this. in the middle of, like, saying goodbye to everybody. Uh, so it's like a it's like a day after, or a couple days after the yes. flashpoint. Okay. It's Except not... he's also not obviously <laughs> mortally wounded anymore, so it's like, what the hell? No, I'm also wearing my suit just like my son wears his or, suit when he's or... wounded, and then, you know, we look like I, we're fine. Right, but we're totally not. <laughs> Maybe I mean, it's a couple weeks that later. That could be. <laughs> he he uh, seems pretty spry. So, so he's telling him, like, oh, it's weird that you're here. They're breaking into my house right now. Yes. Right as I'm talking to you, what's yes. happening? It's supposed to be convenient. Hey, Flash, okay. do you want they to do take care that. of that shit? It's really fast. <laughs> yeah, right? I'm going to talk to my dad. You go punch this. No, because the cosmic treadmill is destroyed. So Flash has to rebuild the treadmill. Well, can't he stop and, like, fight these people for a minute and then rebuild the treadmill? No. Okay. <laughs> because because there's too many people. Oh, I see. And oh, they're, and they're like, sure. they're, well, listen, there's, and there's Amazonians Woman. and Atlanteans. They're both super, they're both, both right. races are super like strong. Just Wonder Woman or just Aquaman would, would still give him a hard a, time. Yeah. yeah. Even so, though they shouldn't, he should be able to beat them in like a second. I know. <laughs> so, Flash has to rebuild the treadmill. Okay. With, and, and the and the the invaders are coming. And so, Flash is like, I need like, I don't know, a, a minute or two. What is it? Lego pieces? They just break apart, but they're easily put back together again. <laughs> For yeah. Flash, yes, because Flash like knows how it works, so he knows how to like rebuild it. No, I'm talking about like lightning hit this thing. There should be broken, shattered pieces. Yes, yeah, yeah, but he should not be able to yeah. put it back he's together. Super fast, he's super, super fast, super so he goes across the gets... world and grabs supplies he needs. <laughs> yeah, it's just it will take him about a minute, and so Batman or Batman have to protect him mm-hmm. or keep them off him until he can build the treadmill. Okay. So then, father so and son, Batman. Just... Yeah. So then, get on the treadmill and get the fuck out of there. Exactly. Okay. So then father and son Batman team up to fight nameless goons. Yay. And it's cool. Because Thomas Wayne Batman, he murders people and uses guns. So he's like, let's do this. 
And then Batman throws a batarang at him, and he's like, oh, "We're not, we're not doing that." All right. And so you know, <laughs> Bruce, Bruce, I'm your father. Listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, two Batman father and son beat the shit out of these th- these people, and it's pretty rad. Okay. Uh, so they, they call off the first wave and as they're fighting it becomes apparent that the universe they're living in or the time they're living in is being unmade and like this wave of like of the Langoliers are coming yeah <laughs> and they're eating time and they're, they're eating, eating time, time. <laughs> yeah. and so right. they gotta hurry before the Langoliers come and eat them so <laughs> Thank you for putting that in terms we can understand. Exactly. Huh. So I just have to rip some newspaper really so, so they have, <laughs> so they have a few minutes uh, or a few seconds before the next like Bunch of bad guys show up slash okay. un, slash anti time. They decide them. to attack in waves for no reason. Yes, yeah. or like there's one really overzealous team that uh, like used all their energy to get there, which is why they were so easily defeated by two regular uh, people. You yeah. see, I, I figured it was we, we attack yeah. in waves, you know, to give them a sporting chance. Be like, oh, you survived that wave. All right, well now we'll okay. all break. And the second wave is actually tougher, so it's like a video game. So Batman <laughs> and uh, and Batman are like having a moment, and it's cool because like you never really get this moment. You got it in Convergence, but nobody fucking liked that. So right. moving on. So we're doing it again. Basically, Bruce Wayne is like, I promised myself if I was ever, because I live a crazy life. I and promised myself I wouldn't cry. <laughs> I promised myself because I live this crazy life and there would be probably an opportunity for me to run into my fucking anti, or like alternate reality dad, that if I did get this opportunity, I would just, and I knew that like there would be only a few seconds before all of time was unmade or some goddamn thing. And I only had like one sentence to tell you. It is this, I have a son and you're a grandfather. Aww. You're like, that's kind of sweet. Kinda nice. It's too bad your son is Damien. <laughs> yeah, but Batman loves Damien. So yeah, he like, loves him. Yeah. So it's great and for him. Thomas Nobody in this scene like, thinks that that sucks. Right. Yeah, Thomas is like, that's nice. He doesn't know Damien. So it works out. <laughs> So he's able to think. That you he's know like, that if Thomas Wayne came into the world, you would love Dave. Would he? I don't. You're but not I'm not Thomas Wayne. Wayne. Okay. So anyway, he tells him that he's his, that he's a grandfather, and Flash is like, "I fixed the, the treadmill. We gotta go." And What's Batman's that going like, by itself. Yeah, it's gonna leave without us, whether we like. Yeah. It or what about not. Wave Two? Yeah, Wave Two's coming, and so Batman's like, "Yeah, you don't understand though. This is fucking Tron Legacy. I'm not leaving without my dad. Uh-huh. Like you're coming." And Tom is like, no, push. And he shoves Batman into Barry. And so Barry's like getting the treadmill. Run. Well, the treadmill's already charging without them because he doesn't want to go or whatever. He doesn't He doesn't explain himself. But he does say... That sucks. He does say like, Flash, you promised that you would save my son when I first met you. You better fucking deliver. You protect my son. He gives him the speech where he says, you're the greatest gift I've ever received. And if there's one piece of fatherly advice that I can give you, it's this. Don't be Batman. Live your life. You, di- you you paid your debt. You've honored your mom and me. Let it go. Like, I'm about to be unmade and die. Let Batman die with me and live your life. And then Batman and Flash disappear. And then uh, the, like, time starts to get unmade. Uh, Thomas Wayne throws the detonator away. He faces the unmaking of reality and he, like, Leaps into it. Interesting. Which is pretty badass. It he is also badass, says, but he also should say, like, this was a mistake. Yeah. It's... Oops. <laughs> Wait, I don't want to die. I regret everything. <laughs> oh, I should have gone with them. Damn it. There's no reason I didn't go with them. Yeah. No, Why no. did I do that? <laughs> now, we'll talk about that in a second. Because, okay. like, there's... Okay. It, okay there's actually... Okay. The thing he actually says is cool, because... Uh, basically, to prove that he is Bruce Wayne, he says, like, do you remember what you told me the first time I fell in the cave? And... They have this moment where he's like, like, you said, I don't I want don't you hanging around the backyard. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am trying to solve a puzzle. <laughs> so he says, uh, he says, like, he says, Wayne's never stay down. We rise. And so he says the same thing when he faces his doom. Hmm. It's really cool. It's just a, I, I really like that moment. It's nice. And then Batman's like, no, my dad. No, nah, this sucks. Why did that happen? Why did I ask him to write, like, one thing down? Like, right? anything. Just a scrap of paper. Like, well, hi. He the paper because he met him. He got to, like, have a conversation with him as a man. And that's, just, that's, that's better than a letter. Especially because the letter was mostly about Barry. <laughs> No, not the same. Not the same letter. Write no. something about me. Yeah, write a new thing about me and about how my mom turned into the Joker in this reality. Mm. So yeah, thanks, Brian Azzarello. So Batman's like, that doesn't make any sense, though. 
<laughs> why that's me? Yeah. Why did we get on the treadmill only to go to a reality that technically doesn't exist, only to have that reality exist just for enough time for us to talk to my dad and then have it be unmade? Right. Oh, God is cruel. Yeah. yeah. And then they bump into Reverse Flash, who's running through the Speed Force on his way <laughs> from the Batcave in the beginning of the story. He's got the button in his uh, okay. hand, and they're like, Hey, there he is! Listen, Aobard, you got to stop running. You're going to die. And he's like, ah, I'm not going to die. I, I'm unkillable. I'm, all, I'm eternal. Nah, nah, nah. No, uh, yeah, but you're just Jesus. trying to trick me. Yeah, exactly. Like, why would I believe you? And it's amazing because he says things like, He's such a dick. Where he's like, I got an idea. I just figured it out. Okay, so I'm going to kill your mom, right? And when I do, you're going to be like a little boy, and you're going to be sad. But then I'm going to show up. As like a social worker or like a trusted person. And then I'll like take you in and raise you as my own. And then I'll become your greatest enemy and I'll like kick your ass as a little boy. Like, what the fuck is your problem? <laughs> I don't know. That sounds like a really diabolical scheme it and is I'm on board. horribly <laughs> diabolical. So then, uh, he, you know, they're like, dude, whatever, wherever you're going, whoever you're going to bump into is going to fuck you up. And he's like, no, you don't understand. Like, I'm a badass and cool. So he bails on... Flash and Batman, and ends up in this, like, weird, like, it looks like Thanos' lair in most of the Marvel movies, where it's just rocks floating, floating in space. space. Yeah. But he says, like, hey, like, I know that you, like, whoever you are, like, because basically he traces, like, whatever the button, like, whatever energy signature it has Kind of like a homing beacon, I yeah, guess. Yeah, and he follows it to what he believes to be God. And he's like, hey, like, I know that, like, you don't want me to find you and I know that, like, you've stolen time and stuff, but, like, I'm reverse Flash. I don't know if you know this, but I'm, I'm, deal. but I'm kind of a big deal. I was the main villain in Flashpoint. And then the, Dr. Manhattan shows himself, but you don't you never see him in the book. Right. And he says, and he just deuces himself and goes like, oh, wait, I don't want to die. And then he just, he just vaporizes half of, half of Thawne's body. But so, it like, is, like, it is Dr. Manhattan. Yes. It is It is. It is unquestionably Dr. Manhattan. So then he... Do we see him? Technically, yes. <laughs> Not right now. Hang on. Okay. So then Thawne screams and dies, and then uh, a time vortex opens up, because, like, Batman and Flash are kind of, like, fucked, because they can't really get back home. Uh-huh. Uh... Because of the because of the vortex, because of like God or Doctor Manhattan or whatever, like messing with them. Basically, the point is like they're getting lost in the time stream. Oh, and this voice care like calls out to them, and it well it calls out to Barry, and it's like Barry, you gotta follow me. You gotta follow my voice. <laughs> and he's Look like that Bruce guy. He's a real gentleman. Yeah, but don't worry about him. Yeah, uh, he says like you gotta you gotta say my name and it'll it'll bring me out. It'll bring me out of this. What? And so Barry, what, they fucking never ending story. To this? Yes, <laughs> call my name, Barry. It's... All right, I will. I will do what I dream. Jay Garrick. <laughs> and so a lightning bolt appears. Jay Garrick, who has been long forgotten since the New Fifty Two, uh-huh. uh, you know, original Flash and member of the Justice Society. Emerges from the Speed Force, a la Wally West from DC Rebirth. Right. He rescues Batman and Flash and brings them and pushes them back into their time. And, but he doesn't come with them. He does. He tries to, and Barry's like, "I don't know who you are. <laughs> are you like? But, are you important? It's right." Way? Like, and he's like, Should "Barry, you don't you? understand. I'm Jay Garrick. I'm the Flash. I need you to remember me." And so he yeah, starts like. But I'm the Flash. Yeah, but I'm Flash. That doesn't make any sense. Too many fucking Flashes here, man. Oh but uh, so we have that moment, like in DC Rebirth, when Wally is going to get sucked into the Speed Force and dispersed throughout time, mm-hmm. and uh, then Barry grabs his arm. There's an electrical charge between them, and then he pulls Wally West back in. Yeah. Um, he grabs Jay Garrick's arm, yeah. and then some blue energy appears and pulls Jay Garrick away, and. Basically says like, "Oh no, you don't!" and just yanks Jay Garrick back <laughs> this out. This time, and Barry's look, like, I gave you one friend. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, that already screwed up enough things. So then uh, he re he re steals Jay Garrick, and how Flash does, is like, "Damn it!" How does Reverse Flash end up back in the cave? Uh, Doctor Manhattan puts him there, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Well, it's like, a, I don't look, want this skeleton here in my place. I do want Jay Garrick, though, so I'll just switch him. Well, I'll put him someplace. Yeah. yeah. I want to send it back and have him, like, like have Batman see him, like, 
fall over half dead. Yeah. Screaming. Because it was a cool image. It's almost, as if, awesome. it's almost as if I have to put you there just because time says so. Like, yeah. He already was there You're in supposed the past. to be there. Because well, so he does in the beginning of the story. Idea. But you wrote Damn. the story! Yeah, so, well, he was supposed to die in space, but here you go. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, Batman and Barry both basically agree Wait, that was a fucked so up situation. Barry doesn't know who <laughs> Jake Garrick is. No, he doesn't remember him. Right, Even though he he's... should, because like technically he read comic books about him and then went to his reality and then they merged realities and then Jay Garrick was just always the Flash. Like it's yeah, they they just threw that away. They threw away the entire Justice Society. Um, but now they're like giving you they keep they keep teasing the audience who likes Justice Society. Like right. they'll they'll be back. They're around. There's just, a document stuff now. There's still characters. Listen, Doctor Manhattan doesn't want you to see him. Not me. Yeah, he's putting him over here. Yeah. And that guy's a dick. Yeah. He, he's a big blue dick. Exactly. It's, so they're they, like... Did they fucking explain, like, why, why Manhattan, like... He's, is, like, fucking around with people? Yeah. No. Okay. okay. No. Um, Not what's, yet, anyway. So then, there are theories, though, I assume. Yes, of yeah, course. Okay. So then uh, the, the, the story ends with Batman kind of, like, standing in Wayne Manor, like, looking at the window, and remembering his father's advice of, like, don't be Batman anymore. Then the signal comes on, and he just looks at it, and Alfred's like... Master Bruce, are you going to answer it? And then Bruce just kind of like looks away. Mm. And you're like, oh, fuck. Oh, then, do? back in like Asteroidville, there's the button sitting there. And then Dr. So- Manhattan grabs it. Oh, Wait. shit. Okay, cool. And the story ends with a rehash of a line from Watchmen where Dr. Manhattan says, why does my perception of time distress you? Everything is preordained, even my responses. We're all puppets. I'm just the puppet who can see the strings. Okay, so why does he have the button, though? Well, it looks like, well, he wanted it. Like, I don't think Dr. Manhattan signed off on the button being in Batman's cave in the first place. No, but... But now that They he... all had the button. Yes, and then he took it back. Yeah. He, I guess he but coerced how like, is this Flash into bringing it to him or well, something? Well, like, Aobard steals the button from Batman and he's like what's up with you like he wants to know more about it yeah and he uses it to get to Dr. Manhattan and Dr. Manhattan's like well I'm keeping this okay so he just goes to like where he feels like it comes from yes. or it talks to him or yeah or something. whatever he never really explains okay, like some how he piece gets of the button and prints on it him. no that's not how that works yeah so Dr. Manhattan kills him he drops the button he him takes back, the button and then he picks up the button yes and then the epilogue to the story I was like this is the button kind of like floating through space and the blood lifting off of it, and then the button kind of like transitioning into the shield of Superman. Why? Uh, it's indicating the start of the miniseries Doomsday Clock, oh. which is written by Jeff Johns with art by Gary Frank, which takes place a year later. A year after this? Yes, it's happening now. Like, issue two came out last week. Okay. And. It will run for 12 issues, and on the 12th issue, the time in the DC Universe will have caught up with the with, with the Doomsday Clock. And it will be midnight. Yeah. Okay. So, do, is there an explanation or an interpretation of why... Because Batman asks, like, why did we go back to Flashpoint? Yes. Uh, the, like, why did they? Okay, great question. The answer, in my opinion, has to do with the story that's happening in, that happened in Action Comics... Where uh, Jor El reappears, Superman's father. Apparently, what happened was like at, right before Krypton exploded, Doctor Manhattan took him, and then stuck him in like a third world camp in on like on Earth, and had him like tortured and like manipulated by like humans, so that when he finally like freed himself, he hates humanity. And so when he goes and finds Kal El, he tries to convince Kal El to leave with him and abandon humanity. Hmm. So there's two there's two main characters who have both met their long dead dads, both of whom told them to stop being who they are, oh. and they're both manipulated by Doctor Manhattan. So the idea is basically that the theory is that Doctor Manhattan fears Batman and Superman and wants them off the table, and also like oh, okay. he has a real problem with dads. Yeah, yeah. He's got real dad issues. He really does. Even like dad figures, like Jay Garrick. Like, no, make any sense because his dad is not mentioned in fucking Watchmen at all. Sure, he is. His dad was the watchmaker. Was he? Yeah, Doctor Manhattan's That's dad, right. uh, yeah. Osterman's father, was right. like a watchmaker who like forced him to like become a watchmaker himself when he was a kid. Yeah, and he abandoned his business when Einstein discovered the time was relative. That's right. And they threw everything out the window. It's like, damn it! No. 
Yeah. No, well, that's no. Why you, you Time know, is relative, but we still need watches, Dad. It's true. Well, you know why he threw the clock out the window? It's done. Right? <laughs> no, because he wanted to see time fly. That's it. <laughs> so uh, the button is. No, like... no, you're done. Get out. That was the. That was terrible. Fair enough. All right. Well, thanks a lot for watching, everybody. We'll see you guys <laughs> next week with another episode of Back Issues. The button, which I will make available in the description box down below this video. I was wrong. It's four issues. It, it, what? It was four issues. Oh, four oh, okay. issues. Okay. So, uh, DC Rebirth continues. Well, actually, it's over now. Is it? They, they ended. The, they technically ended DC Rebirth, and they're just like, and now we're and just, now it's just we're just in it, and now yeah. it's just DC. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, you know, there's still plenty more about Doctor Manhattan and the Button and others. Actually, I think the Button's done. I think I think right. I think you. He has the Button. The Button's over. He even I, I even I even think he unmade it. Like there's actually cool. some interpretation about what is happening to the Button in the epilogue. Like. The blood is obviously lifting off of the button, right? Right. Is it going back in time to like the to, like the blood not actually dripping on it at all? Like, is it phasing through time to become the mm. button that existed before the comedian bled on it, or is Doctor Manhattan just removing the blood for no good reason? Right. Is he cleaning it off because he has other plans for it? Is it cleaning it off so because that like it's no in evidence? space and that's just what's happening? Except to like it? there's bl- except it's getting liquid again. Yeah, it shouldn't at it's all. Dried. And I know exactly why it's there. It's because it's red and yellow, which are the same primary colors as Superman's shield. And so we want to illustrate that. But Superman is integrally important. I get why it's but there, but why, why does, does the, the blood, blood come off? Because of you can yes. do the visual thing with it. Wow. With it just being there, I know. So why does the blood come off? And it could be that it means, like, this ain't Watchmen. You know, like, we've been using the visual of the bloody button forever, the one from Watchmen. We're taking the blood off as if to say, like, this is not what you like if you think you know Watchmen you wrong what? or are they saying like that we're go- I don't know the this whole is, book has been about time this so I is feel not like, the button yeah. this is actually just ketchup right maybe, maybe it's, <laughs> it's the button the, it's the other button in yeah. in Watchmen the one where the guy's eating fries or a burger or something oh yeah yeah I, the, that's a shirt but yeah I could buy that it's like t- D it's de bloodifying it's de bloodifying because it's, he's sending it back in time right like maybe he's not even gonna keep the button maybe he's putting it back where it came from yeah except he doesn't have control have over time. He just perceives time differently. differently. Except that he also is the culprit for the missing years in the DC universe. Yeah, but that's like a new power. Well, yeah. Well, and maybe this is our way of their way of showing us that is a new power of his. Mm. Like, look at how he's detiming I'm, it. I mean, I could interpret this as like we're gonna go back and like undo Watchmen, and like he's gonna do like. Manhattan's gonna do it different. Yeah, you know? he's not, by the way. Yeah. Or if he does, that's another that that's another But yet. you should read uh, Doomsday Clock number one is a direct sequel to Watchmen. Oh, weird. Okay. Yes, I I say wait a year and we'll talk about it. But like, yeah. I'm not gonna read it, so don't oh. worry. But we'll talk about it. Yeah, it's it's, it's interesting. But right. uh, anyway, the button. So now it finally answers the question of the button: Where did it come from? Why was it put there? Who took it? Uh, and why? It was all just kind of an accident, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Or, or not. not. Or, or, or yeah. not. It doesn't answer any question about the button, except where is it right now? And even then, I don't know where it is. Well, it's in space. Is it? Sure. It, it was. was in space. It was right there. But, yeah, like, what did you do after Why did pick it up and then just throw it into space? Is that what he did with it? He's, well, no, because, like, blood is coming it. off of it. So, like, clearly Manhattan's mus- messing with it in some way. So or he picked, picked it up space. and then he, like, threw know. it in front of him and then he... Just messed around with it. it. You know what's really frustrating about the button in this book is how different it varies in size depending on who's drawing it. Mm. Like, it, in this scene, Batman is playing with the button, mm-hmm. and it's basically the size of the button. Yeah. It's like fits in it's the roughly, of the roughly a little smaller than the palm of his hand. Yeah. Manhattan seems to indicate that as well. Well, he's Manhattan, it up. he can change size. But he can change size, size so who knows how so big it is. One. Yeah, but it looks bigger in his hand so he made his hand a little smaller maybe uh, but Eobard Thawne's holding it and it's the size of like a comically large yeah it's like like a mayoral button yeah. well it's the size of a cookie yeah exactly yeah. a big cookie but why well he's got small hands I guess that's true <laughs> it's not <laughs> but it sets up a lot of things like hey it reminds you like don't worry we didn't forget about the JSA we didn't forget about the Legion of Superheroes you forgot about the button though well, no we didn't forget about gone. it you I got no answers you forgot about well, that's like true how it got there well we just and didn't why? bother to tell you and and now you're never going to and i i really don't think they even know no of course they don't 
That sucks. How it's like, how it's like they J.J. Know? Abrams after it's The Dark Force Man Awakens. Hatton. He didn't fucking know. He didn't know anything. Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> Figure it out. <laughs> and then and then Ryan Johnson's like, no. <laughs> anyway, thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you guys next week with an all new episode. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. And I'm Ben. Bye.